On 24th March 2020, the government announced the largest civilian evacuation to take place in history. It shouldn't be that hard to get home, right? So after two months, I had finally received a payment link on the 21st of May for a flight on the 24th. The ticket cost me $2,500, which was 1.4 lakhs. Alright, to put things in perspective, a normal ticket from Vancouver to Delhi costs around 60 to 70,000. But hey, this is a pandemic, so the prices are justified, right? So after paying for the ticket, I had only this screenshot of the payment summary and nothing else. I waited for a day for my ticket and I hadn't received it. The flight was in four days. I tried bombarding them with emails, but I would only get an automated reply. They would ask me to call on these numbers and then they would say, Sir, we request you to wait. We cannot do anything. We can only pass on the message to the special team. Now I felt like I was Too truly stranded. stranded. I tried calling the consulate who would in turn ask, ask me to call Air India, India and the Air India, India executive would be like, like, like Sir, we request you to wait. We cannot do anything. We can only pass on the message to the special Solution kya hai? The fly was on the next day and I still didn't have a ticket. And the best they could still do was this was a rhetorical solution I was given but for some reason I just called the consulate one last time I literally had to pressurize them to such an extent where I asked them to pay my rent for next month because I had put most of my savings in buying this ticket and in 10 minutes in 10 minutes I received my ticket I mean you must be wondering Problem Why do I have to pressurize the consulate in such an unethical way to get my ad? The problem kya hai? Is it okay to be unorganized in these situations? Vancouver has one of the costliest housing markets in the world. I would be going broke until I got my refund. So then problem kya hai? They weren't even giving me a guarantee of my ticket or an alternative solution. Paying for an overbooked flight and getting the ticket refunded later is a risk nobody can afford in this situation. So then problem kya hai? Putting a standard citizen in a chaotic situation like this is a problem. Problem. This is just not me. There are so many people from different parts of the world who are in the same situation. There were also people who transferred money to Air India but never received their ticket. They had to buy a fresh ticket if it was available. Or just come to the conclusion that their trip to the airport was just a very risky, expensive road trip. Most of us just don't have one or two lakhs lying around. Everyone has 50,000 rupees just lying around. And I, I was given 10 hours notice to pay this. Now to the actual traveling bit. So before you get onto the flight, they check your temperature, your BP and your heart. And if you show any symptoms, they just don't let you fly, which is great. At the airport, most of them forgot social distancing rules. I mean, masks or gloves when they ka kya And there was this guy who came right up to my face and he was like, Bro, when are they going to allow us to board the plane, bro? Kitna time aur lagoge? Oi to problem hai! Even in the aircraft, only the middle seats were left empty. What's the point of charging distressed Indian twice the amount but also risking our lives at the same time? The whole thing is that you have to maintain social distancing on social distancing at every level, not only at one place. Food and water are left on your seat before boarding to avoid any unnecessary contact, as well as gloves, a mask, hand sanitizer and a visor. Unless, of course, you get a seat at the back half of the plane, and I'm not sure if they did this on purpose or if they just ran out of the back half, just weren't provided with these items. Of course, that makes sense because the coronavirus is biased towards rows 1 through 25. After you're off, you are then ushered through different medical checks, bag sanitization and immigration by airport staff and security. I feel throughout the entire process, this was the only place where everything was conducted smoothly and systematically. And I just want to take a moment to say kudos to them because they did an amazing job, not, not just making the process safe, but also really, really easy. So the consulate gave me a list of hotels which we can choose from. But when you reach the airport, the airport staff strictly asked you to pick a hotel of their choice and the people who had already made advanced booking in hotels you just lost a ton of money so do not make any advanced booking even though the quarantine facilities are issued by the state government or by your consulate look i know the government the consulate and air india are conducting one of the largest evacuations in history and it is not easy but Where's the information? And nobody foresaw a pandemic coming. But even a great plan fails with the simplest of flaws in it. We are the fifth largest economy in the world. So let's behave like one. What about those Indians who are panicking because of a few technical errors from your side? Just announcing we've rescued standard citizen 
is not good enough. You have to provide the authentic details, give the people a heads up. Yes, the payment link given by Air India might crash. Yes, you might not get a ticket much in advance, but even then we will give you a booking ID through which you can go to the airport and get your ticket. I mean, the authorities can only enforce social distancing so much. We have to have that discipline in us to maintain social distancing, follow the rules safely and educate or tell people when they are breaking rules. Tell us in advance that we don't have to book hotels and you will allocate us the hotel. Nobody climbs a mountain in one day. A few simple steps make a great plan a successful one and that's all I want to say.